So before anything else, I would like to thank the organizing committee of the 17th uh, Alkenorica Congress for inviting me to this uh, uh, Congress. And uh, it is a privilege for me to be in front of the esteemed scientists, uh, molecular systematists. So uh, my topic is about the use of automated uh, feature tracking insect resistance and feeding behavior analysis of leafhopper and rasta bigotuna ishida in Edgland. So this is part of our five year, actually uh, the sixth year of our project, the OSTP card project, entitled Development of Improved Eggplant Varieties with New Plant Defense Genes with Multiple Insect Resistance Using Innovative Technologies. So why work on eggplant? So eggplant is an important vegetable in the Philippines. Uh, it is a high value vegetable. Um, we uh, put, uh, planted in more than 21,000 hectares with an average volume of production of about 214,000 metric tons valued at 8 billion pesos. It is a high valued cash crop with three to four days harvesting interval with harvesting season that can extend up to nine months, or depending on the crop stand. So eggplant is an important source of dietary fiber, vitamins, and minerals with antioxidant properties in the form of chlorogenic acid and acidine. So eggplant farmers are challenged by a number of important insect pests and diseases. So I will focus my talk on the insect pests of eggplant Specifically, the eggplant leaf hopper, uh, scientifically known as Amara Amraska bigutula, which is the second most damaging insect pest of eggplant next to the eggplant fruit and shoot borer. This is a polyphagous flow feeder with yield loss reaching up to 50%. So, the feeding of this um, LH uh, lead to uh, phytotoxemia, or when uh, uh, during feeding, uh, toxic saliva is ingested on the tissues. So here is the damage symptoms of leaf hopper, feeding on leaf hopper. Uh, initially, uh, feeding would uh, cause uh, yellowing of the inner margins, which, ex which extend uh, um, resulting to drying, yellowing, drying, curling, and severe hopper burn symptoms that would lead to stunting and uh, eventual death of the plant. So a number of IPM strategies are available for the management of the leaf hopper. So this include crop rotation, planting of truck crop, biological control, chemical control, and the use of resistant variety. So farmers have been dependent on the use of chemical control in the form of uh, active ingredients as, as Thiamethoxam, uh, imidacloprid, um, thiamethoxam plus lambda, hyalurin, and uh, abamectin. So the use of uh, resistant varieties is uh, sustainable, eco-friendly, and uh, this approach is compatible with other control strategies. So in the IPM pyramid, the foundation is a resistant variety. Uh, either a conventional or a genetically modified variety. So our work at the Institute of Plant Breeding, College of Agriculture and Food Science, Cipilus Banos, uh, deals with the development of economically important crop with insect resistance trait. So uh, post-plant resistance would involve conventional methods of screening large number of germplasm. Uh, for example, uh, for this instance, um, eggplant germplasm, and then um, we do a weekly monitoring of the density of leaf hopper and visual damage assessment. After that, uh, we conduct feeding and ovipositional preference tests in net cages in the greenhouse. But then these um, methods of conventional method of screening is a laborious, it's a laborious process, mostly because you have to establish a farm in order to evaluate the germplasm. 
And the data generated is uh, inconsistent because it varies from season to season. So an integrated system developed by Nodus Information Technology in cooperation with Vahanigan University in the Netherlands uh, developed this new integrated system known as Entolab. So uh, what we did is to screen the leaf hopper resistance, screen leaf hopper resistance in the 10 implant with varying level of reactions. So the hardware, uh, the hardware includes the box, the assay plates, uh, the LED light panel, the fan, the camera, and the computer. The software includes F-Vision XT, F-Analysis, and uh, Media Recorder. So the objectives of this study is to demonstrate the use of the Ethelab in phenotyping uh, the leaf hopper behavior for screening resistance in eggplant germplasm that would include uh, cultivated and wild relatives. So specifically, we would like to determine and analyze the different leaf hopper behavior statistics in a non-choice arena using Ethelab. Second is to determine the effective number of bars that the leaf hopper would show significant difference in, in behavior among eggplant chain type over a 16-hour video recording. And uh, third is to determine the behavior parameters that would yield significant differences among the eggplant genotypes. So first, we, had, uh, we conducted the field screening. There were 400 uh, uh, eggplant geoplasm that would include um, open pollinated variety, land races, accessions, and we obtained this uh, germplasm from Nago, Japan, uh, USDA, and uh, some of the collections from IPD. And these were field evaluated for the proper resistance uh, for two seasons, and uh, the 400 is narrowed down from 30 and then to 10 uh, promising genotypes. So one third fully expanded leaf Clean leaf was collected from uh, five potted plants per entry, uh, ages aged uh, four, four to five days after transplanting. And the leaf strip were prepared, was prepared uh, in the no choice assay plate. Ten strips uh, of different entries can be accommodated or can be evaluated all at the same time. So that would include seven insects per entry per trial. And we have uh, five trials that would uh, total to um, 35 insects um, evaluated. So after we have prepared the leaf strip, then we prepare the insects. So the insects uh, come from the uh, rearing cage. Uh, we use okra uh, in rearing the leaf hopper because they um, reproduce more easily. So in here, If you can see, uh, these uh, assay plate have holes, and each individual uh, 15 star leaf hopper name is placed is placed in each hole. So you you first fill the uh, row, and then the gatekeeper will be moved sideways to prevent the scale of the insect. And then you continue this uh, release of the insects until you come to the last um, hole. So there are 70 holes in each assembly. So this is the schematic diagram of the uh, assembly plate in a no choice test. So at the bottom is the cage assembly. Uh, and then um, uh, at the top of the cage assembly is the gatekeeper, and then um, on top of the cage assembly is the arena plate, which is sandwiched by foam. So the leaf strip is sandwiched by foam, and then you remove the gatekeeper sideways to release the nymph. So this is the assembly of the no choice assay plate. Uh, so, so the after we have uh, completed the cage assembly, then we will put them in the uh, envelope. So we set the uh, video recording at 16 hours using a media recorder. 
And the um, acid plate, the nutrients acid plate, is carefully inserted into this uh, assembly in the envelope. And then we align the cage plate and the arena plate and the, the holes of the arena plate and the cage plate. And then to release the leaf hoppers. So the assembly, the envelope features a camera. So this, the assembly features a camera that can be adjusted. So we have a top light and back light. In our case, we use the top light. And then we have the fan, the heated cover glass, and the ABR that regulates the fan, the light, and the CPU. And a um, video recording is uh, using the media, uh, media recorder that is um, intended for 16 hours use. So after you have uh, prepared the the setup, now you now you need to track the leaf, the leaf hopper behavior using the Envision XT. So after the 16 hour video recording, the file will be exported to Envision XT. So you need to adjust the detection or the sensitivity setting, start the acquisition, and then track tracking will be done for two hours per trial. So here is the uh, set up of the uh, uh, Vision XT. So these, uh, these red dots represent the insects. So the insect is moving. So that means that uh, it is detected by the uh, media recorder. So this one uh, on the left is the arena, arena number. Okay. And these are the, uh, after that, you need to uh, analyze using the, analyze the track, tracking using the echo analysis. There are 37 statistics, uh, 13, and then the 14 up to 22 include uh, uh, short, medium, and the, uh, long event categories. So analysis of leaf hopper behavior uh, is done using ento analysis. So you need to uh, set the look ahead window uh, into four frames and the velocity threshold will be set at 0.45 per second. So greater than 0.45 millimeter per second would uh, uh, mean that the leaf hopper is moving. Less than 0.45 millimeter per second means that the leaf hopper is haunting or uh, the uh, insect is dead. So you filter out the arena when there is uh, less than 500 halting and movement event counts and um, there is greater than 2.5 hours continuous halting. And there is, uh, lastly, there is uh, less than 50% detection. So this is the tracking path arena. And this is the graph of the leaf hopper movement and how it is. So in here, you can see the movement of leaf hopper leaves among the eggplant genotypes. So I, well, we just, uh, we just uh, show here the representative samples of the genotype, the highly susceptible JP3351, the moderately resistant PI36727 and the highly resistant uh, wild eggplant Solana Mamosum uh, PHN9405. You can see in the highly susceptible um, uh, arena that there are more halting events, meaning feeding events, than moving events in zone one. This is the zone one containing the leaf and there are lower spikes which uh, means uh, showing the movement. So there are more feeding here than halting. Whereas in the moderately resistant PI 367 there were events that the leaf hopper is in the neutral zone or in the zone two. There are no leaf there. So there are more pronounced erratic behavior of leaf hopper in the moderately resistant genotype compared to the susceptible 
uh, genotype implying that there is restlessness among the insect. In the bottom graph, you can see that uh, the spikes are more prominent. So erratic your behavior na leaf hopper on this uh, wild type as they choose to feed on the entry, do not choose to feed on the entry and prefer to stay in the neutral zone in the upper upper part of the graph. So here is the graph of the average halting and movement behavior. Average movement uh, is a means that the genotype is moving. So in here, this is this is the susceptible genotype. Uh, it has a um, shorter shorter um, movement. That means it is more feeding on the uh, 1,000 seconds. So the um, it is more staying on the leaf tissues of the susceptible as compared to this uh, uh, highly resistant uh, genotype. For the duration of the halting, that means uh, it is uh, um, duration of the halting. Okay. So in here, the the the, the insect is more uh, restless. So that means uh, it has a shorter halting uh, duration. Okay, and as compared to this, uh, whereas the other genotypes are significant, do not differ significantly among the others. So estimated distance moved, the uh, resistant has more, has a uh, far distance move compared to the susceptible genotype. Uh, halting frequency, uh, if there are more, uh, the estimated total count per hour is more uh, larger or longer in the resistant genotype that uh, reach up to 4,000 compared to the susceptible genotype. Okay. In here, uh, this only shows the graph from zero to 16 hours, and uh, we can uh, we have uh, observed that uh, within the 16 hour video tracking period, the uh, the insects can have uh, significant differences um, among the leaf hopper. In the leaf hopper behavior, can be seen within two to eight hours. So in conclusion, uh, 37 behavior parameters were analyzed among the 10 eggplant genotypes. And then among these behavior statistics, consistently higher movement duration, distance move, and velocity were significantly different in the resistant and the susceptible genotypes. So uh, the leaf hopper behavior statistics showed significant differences at time intervals as early as 2 to 8 hours from a 16 hour trial uh, duration. And the screening method for leaf hopper resistance using Entolab offers a more precise and more objective way of screening for leaf hopper resistance among large eggplant chino germplasm over a short period of time using uh, fewer uh, sample plants. So the use of Entolab is the first in the Philippines to be used uh, and uh, could be considered only as a tool to provide a more detailed understanding of insect uh, feeding behavior. So uh, this uh, Entolab, we uh, experienced that it is more uh, appropriate for use for sucking insects such as thrips, aphids, and leaf hoppers. And we will um, use this uh, Entolab uh, in our study for cassava millibugs and white, white flies for our next project. Okay, so that's it. Uh, and we would like to thank the uh, UP Las Banas, uh, the College of Agriculture, Forestry, uh, for food, food Science, 
and the Institute of Plant Living Breeding for the use of uh, the facilities. Uh, the DOSTP card for uh, the uh, most important funding funding of the project, and the what uh, to uh, Mr. Martin Yoma of of the Fakenkin uh, University, the the Netherlands as our partner and collaborator. Thank you.